So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, the third uh, Big Data Pilot Demo Day. Uh, let me start sharing my screen while people are joining. Is this, is this visible? Yes. It is, Marek. Okay, good. So let's give one more minute for people to join. <coughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the third uh, Big Data pilot demo day, uh, a big data stack seafarer's tale of real-time shipping, um, featuring this time Status Plitzus, Head of Development at DC Technologies, and Yusuf, Mo Yusuf Moati, Senior Researcher at IBM Research Haifa, and an invited speaker, uh, uh, Despina Kopanaki uh, from IBDAS Project uh, and Fourth uh, uh, Organization. So my name is Monique Willems from Trust IT, partner in the Big Data Sec project. Um, I'll be moderating today's uh, online demonstration. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. We are very excited to, um, to share with you the demonstration of the Big Data Stack pilot on real-time shipping, uh, on real-time ship, man ship management in Danaos. Um, but prior to, uh, to getting started, I'd like to review a few of the technical um, details that belong to the webinar. So first, the webinar is in listen-only mode. Uh, that means that you can hear me, you can hear the speakers, but we can't hear you. Uh, this prevents everyone on the line from having uh, some unnecessary background noise. Um, but you, what we do, however, invite you to, uh, to pose your questions in the question and answer uh, box you find in the lower half of the, in, at the bottom of the, of the Zoom um, uh, interface. Uh, we can see your questions and we can then uh, answer them uh, written, but we will also take them to the question and answer moment at the end of, uh, of, our, uh, of the presentations. Uh, where you will also be, have the, the opportunity to be uh, to speak, uh, we can unmute you easily, uh, so you can uh, you can answer you can ask your questions in, with audio if you if if preferred. Um, then rest me to say that the webinar will be recorded. Uh, the slides and recordings will be made available uh, in a day or so, uh, and you'll also receive them uh, via mail. So. Uh, uh, today's webinar uh, with the speakers. You can already see them here uh, online with us. Uh, then the agenda of today is uh, uh, we'll start off with, uh, with uh, our invited speaker, Despina Kopanaki from Forth. Um, she uh, is from the IBDAS project and she will explain the big data stack, the big data pilot demo days, uh, the joint effort uh, by the big data stack, track and know, IBDAS and policy cloud projects. Uh, then Status Pizzas from Danaos will, uh, will be telling the seafarer still. He will be setting the requirements for the Danaos real-time shipping pilot. Uh, after that, Yusuf, Yusuf Moadi from IBM Research will be translating these user requirements to the big data stack architecture and already uh, provided some insights in, uh, in the technologies that we have there. Um, then Status Will, Status Blitzes will uh, run us through uh, a big data stack demonstration in the deep sea user interface. Uh, and after that, it's time for your questions and answers. But now we would also like to get an understanding of who we have on the call, so who you are. Uh, we've defined a series of questions, uh, which uh, you will, uh, you, you see now on the screen, but I'll, I'll be asking, Andrea, could you, could you pop up the, the online poll? Thank you. Sure, Mike. So currently our attendees should be able to see the poll running and they should be able to <clears throat> answer the questions. So it's a set of nine questions and multiple choice that they can just answer. And there are more general questions about the provenience of our attendees and more specific ones about how technical savvy they are, for instance, or if they are familiar with some technologies 
like the one of the complex event processing. Um, I don't know if it's only me, but uh, question number seven is, are you familiar with the concept of object storage? But the word storage is not appearing for some word reason. If you go over with your mouse, you should be able to see the missing word. So you're just hiding behind. Uh, Okay, we have a number of people from Research Academia failed, Marik. And very few people answer the, the questions. Okay. Many of them are working in the shipping industry and all of them with big data. So this is quite nice to know. So we have uh, a technical public today. Nice for our speakers to know. Um, most of them are interested in uh, big data technologies. As main barrier to the implementation of big data analytical solution in their own organization, they see the short of ex expertise in the big data field, uh, as long as uh, some uncertain value. So no grant on the return on investment. Mm. Quite middle and high technical savvy audience as well. Uh, half of the audience is familiar with the concept of object storage. Then we have the 70% of them that are familiar with the concept of complex event processing. Uh, Oh, yeah, uh, as many of them come from the research academia, uh, they are not properly working with the, within the shipping domain. So this is an eye information for Dr. Satis Palizos to know, maybe. Uh, I think 10 seconds more to answer the question, and then we can close, Marik, what do you think? Good, yes. Yes, we can close the poll. Yeah. We have a, so thank you, a nice overview. Thank you. Yeah, we have a nice overview of, of who is on the call. It will also help uh, Satis uh, Pitsus and Yosef Moati uh, for their explanations. Um, so now I would like to uh, pass the floor on to Despina Kopanaki. Uh, she is project manager at Fourth ICS uh, and a PhD candidate in information at the Department of Informatics, University of Piraeus, Greece. Uh, she holds a Master of Science in Applied Economics and Finance from the Department of Economics, Athens University. Uh, and she's managing uh, IBIDA's H2020 project. And before that, she uh, has been involved in several EU funded projects as a researcher and a financial project administrator and, and manager. And her research interests include data mining, data analytics, and privacy preservation of mobility data. Despina, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, many thanks, Marik, for the introduction. Many thanks for your invitation. Uh, as Marik said, I'm a project manager at Forth. Uh, Forth is coordinating uh, the IBIDAS project. Uh, so let me say a few things about uh, this big data pilot demo day series of webinars. Uh, as you are aware, uh, Big Data Value PPP Summit 2020 went virtual due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, so this pushed us for new way of thinking and new ways of collaboration. Uh, so why? Uh, why big data pilot demo days? Uh, Marek, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, what is the common ground that uh, we discovered? Uh, the new data-driven industrial revolution highlights the need for big data technologies to lock the potential application domains. Uh, big data value PPP projects, IBDAS, Big Data Stack, Track and Know, uh, deliver innovative technologies to address the emerging needs uh, for data operations and applications. Uh, the projects on board pilots uh, to show their applicability in a wide variety of sectors and to fully exploit the sustainability of the developed technologies. 
uh, all the projects, the three uh, projects are in the third and final year, are ready to demonstrate their solutions and their developed technologies uh, to you, uh, to interested end users from industry and uh, technology providers for further adoption. Uh, so, uh, in the next slide, uh, you can see the list uh, with the projects that join their forces. Uh, big Data Stack, holistic stack for big data applications and operations. IBDAS, industrial driven big data as a self service solution. Track and Know, big data for mobility, tracking knowledge extraction in urban areas. Uh, and Policy Cloud, cloud for data driven policy management. Actually, Policy Cloud is in the first year. And the aim here is to show the adaptability of the mature technologies developed uh, in big data stack projects to the policy domain sector. So, uh, all these projects join their forces to show uh, their application in uh, different domains like finance, uh, telecommunication, manufacturing, shipping, insurance, healthcare, and so on and so forth. And uh, in the next slide, uh, you can see an overview of the series of webinars. Uh, we have designed 10 webinars. Uh, today we have the third one, and by the mid of July, uh, we plan to conclude this series. Uh, don't forget to uh, visit the Big Data Value webpage for webinars. We constantly update the content there. You can also find all the related information, registration links in our websites. Uh, and of course, if you want to go back and uh, if you have missed the webinar, uh, then you have the opportunity in our YouTube channels and website to see again uh, the webinars. Uh, so, Marika, again, many thanks for the invitation. Uh, back to you. Thank you, Espina. Um, so now uh, we uh, pass on to Statis, Dr. Statis uh, Pitsos, Head of Development at DITSIP Technologies. Um, he's a senior researcher and head of development at the DCIP Technologies and proud member of the Danaos Corporation. He holds a PhD in operations research and decision support systems, uh, and he has worked in many national and European research projects over the past years. Uh, he, focused, uh, he focuses on uh, IoT, big data optimization, and artificial intelligence approaches for the shipping industry. Status Pitos, over to you. Okay, I was muted and was talking to myself. Sorry about that. I uh, hope uh, you can see my screen, uh, even in presentation mode. Uh, you can. Yes, yes, perfectly. Then I'm about to uh, tell you about uh, uh, the Seafarer's Tale, which we inside Big Data Star call it uh, real time ship monitoring. Uh, I'm Stavis Plitsos, Head of Development at uh, DeepC Technologies, as Marika said, part of uh, uh, the Naus Corporation. <clears throat> and uh, I, I would like to share the business risk requirements uh, of, uh, of our uh, pilot. First, a few things about uh, the Naus Corporation. Uh, we're one of the largest independent owners of modern large size container ships. We have a proven track record of operational excellence and technological leadership. Um, our distinct edge in advanced shipping technology and long track record of safety, efficiency, and environmental responsibility helped us forge lasting relationships with our customers. And um, our deep understanding of the shipping domain, given all these years that we're involved into shipping, allowed us to get involved quite early somewhere in the middle of 80s, into software for shipping as well. So uh, apart from shipping services, we, we, we offer software services for the shipping domain. And I will focus on a specific uh, service we offer that uh, is about real-time ship management. Uh, the objectives of uh, such a tool on uh, which we focus um, are related to fuel consumption tracking, Hull drug optimization, which is how dirty the submerged uh, part of the vessel is. Um, machinery troubleshooting, meaning having 
a close look on the data flowing out of the main engine or the generator engines of the, of the vessel and uh, <clears throat> identifying patterns uh, that uh, pinpoint malfunctions. And last but not least, uh, the environmental compliance uh, of, of, of the crew with respect to the um, IMO uh, policies and the company policies. Um, how we do it? Uh, being on board, installing sensors, collecting data from different uh, systems from the vessel, uh, which are sent over a satellite connection to our data houses, and uh, we also augment this data with meteorological uh, information given the vessel position at, at a specific time. And this is where we uh, use artificial intelligence to um, estimate uh, the performance of the vessel. All these end up into um, some uh, very nice screens uh, um, for the end user to have a close look on, uh, on, on the performance of uh, the, the vessel uh, he, she owns. Um, so, <clears throat> In order to collect data from the vessel on board, many things have to be taken into consideration. This is just, uh, you know, um, a bare minimum information on, uh, on what is required from IoT devices on board. We're talking about marine appropriate materials, okay, that uh, can last to humidity and high temperatures. And also, uh, the, the data transmission between all devices should be secure and uh, the, the network of devices should also be scalable, meaning that we, we must be able to uh, collect data from any point of the vessel. This is quite difficult considering that the vessel is a metal box and wireless communication is not as easy uh, as it could be in other domains. Um, in any case, this is more or less a solution uh, we offer for an AI enhanced monitoring uh, uh, of, of the vessel. Um, we believe, given the market needs, that uh, simple data logging is not a solution anymore because ignorance and over information are the two sides of the same coin. So if you get way too much information with no action on, on what you should do, it's more or less useful these uh, useless these days so actionable is information is required from the end user and the analytics over big data is mandatory so we offer a solution that is based on iot discusses about analytics and uh, needs an, an, an infrastructure behind that is capable to support all these requirements um, I'm going to uh, deep down into what we wish to do um, in, the, in the framework of, of, of big data stack. And I'll tell you right now the CFRS state, which we, from, for, for which I started talking about. So um, we all know that vessels have time constrained routes. The thing is that when a main engine part fails unexpectedly, the vessel may go off high, which is very bad. It's very bad for the company image and in particular chartering revenues decrease while replacing immediately the, the broken part increases cost. Uh, so finding, finding uh, potential failures allows us to timely order the spare part and replace it before failure. Um, the thing is that okay we're talking about malfunctions in the main engine of a vessel. Well you don't have to be um, deep into shipping to understand that this is a vast problem. There are many things that can go wrong. So we focus on a, spa, on a very specific uh, malfunction, which, is, uh, which happens on, 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 a, on a part of the cylinder called crosshead bearing. This is a malfunction that evolves gradually, so it's not a sudden event. Uh, but to the best of our knowledge, we don't know a correlation uh, to predict it. Uh, so, uh, we can only detect it with an onboard inspection. So, someone has to get the, literally into the cylinder, have a look on the, on, on the crosshead bearing and uh, decide whether it's 
whether it's going to, to break or not. Uh, however, we know the reason. We know why this malfunction happens. Uh, it is caused due to slow steaming. Uh, slow steaming is a very common practice imposed by charterers. It is used basically to save fuel, but main engines are not designed to work optimally in such slow speeds. So this causes bad lubrication of the cylinder. The thing we wish to do, we wish to predict these breakages, okay? And we strongly believe that as a physical phenomenon, it's somewhere hidden in the data. So we wish to reveal it, okay? Um, on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see the higher level architecture of, of the cylinder. Uh, somewhere in the middle, you can see the crosshead bearing. So you can see that it's a very, not very important. It's right in the middle of the cylinder. So it makes it, uh, crucial. Um, on, on, on the right hand side, uh, you can see an article from Sea Trade Maritime News explaining the economics of slow steam. Uh, this is more or less uh, a statement um, uh, saying that uh, slow steaming happened, happens and will continue to happen. Still, main engines are not designed to work on such slow speeds. And this is, this is a case that we wish to address accordingly. Um, so, uh, we have some technical challenges. There are many parameters related to this malfunction. Uh, so, it is very difficult to accurately predict failures. Uh, we also have an issue uh, with data loss due to broken sensors on board. It's a very difficult environment with a lot of humidity and high temperatures. Uh, and uh, in general, identifying a malfunction pattern seems to be data intensive and computationally demanding. The operational challenges we're, face we're facing, um, we know that premature alarms increase the operating costs uh, because uh, ordering unnecessary parts is something that is not wishful. Uh, spending money, stocking parts that are not necessary, etc., etc. Additionally, the part replacement price depends on three questions. Where the replacement uh, will be performed, when it will happen, and who will do it. Um, the used data we provided into big, into big data stack for this uh, problem uh, is um, can be split into three, roughly into three categories. We're talking about operational data. Um, we use the old school term telegrams, which is more or less um, reports that the captain manually um, fills and sends uh, every 12 hours or upon arrival and departure. Um, so the, the total data set of this category sums up to 47,000 records. Uh, we have general purpose sensor data from 21 different sensors on board, uh, summing up, uh, sorry, with, which, you know, records, um, sensors that uh, collect values on a per minute basis. Uh, and given the number of vessels for which we provided data, this adds up to 60 million records. And last but not least, uh, we're talking about main engine uh, sensor data from 100 different <laughs> different sensors um, that again adds up to 60 million records and are on a per minute basis. Uh, someone could say that this number is not a very large volume of data, but considering that the previously described service uh, is not sold as a software but as a service, okay, and we have um, a number of contracts that is ongoing and expect a big rise in the number of monitored vessels. Uh, the volume we already monitor, we strongly believe that it will increase dramatically. So we need a solution that is scalable and can support all our customers efficiently. Um, this is my part. Uh, up, up to this moment, I described you the, 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 the business requirements. Uh, I'm about to let uh, my co-worker and uh, our coordinator, Josef Moati, uh, describe the, the details on the architecture. Um, 
as far as uh, you know, any IT person can understand, all components of the provided infrastructures and big data stack are utilized. Uh, however, I would like to, um, to, to highlight four components that are of major importance for this uh, use case. Joseph will, uh, will uh, explain in detail what they do. Um, so we're talking about real-time stream processing uh, by distributed complex event processing. And we use this to identify first sensor malfunctions that happen on board in order to tackle the data loss we described and uh, some uh, very crucial business rules of violations. Uh, the second one is the preventive maintenance algorithm, uh, which um, uses the data quality assessment service of Big Data Stack and efficiently predicts malfunctions on the crosshead bearings. Uh, the third, um, the seamless data movement and data analytics that is offering uh, uh, a scalable way to query data, uh, fresh and historical data that reside in two different uh, uh, physical storages. Um, and enhance the SQL query performance uh, via data skipping technologies uh, from IBM. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. Um, Joseph, I think uh, this is your turn now. Okay. Thank you, Stadis. Yusuf, shall I briefly introduce you? Um, so, uh, Yusuf. Sorry, Yosef Moati uh, is, uh, as Statistics already mentioned, the coordinator of Big Data Stack. So he's a senior researcher and head of development, and, uh, sorry, he's a coordinator and a senior researcher at IBM Research Haifa. And his research interests include big data analytics and storage frameworks. Uh, and he has a uh, doctorate in computer science from Telecom Paris Tech and coordinator of, big, of the Big Data Stack project. Yosef, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. And uh, thanks very much for start, to start is for presenting the business uh, goals uh, of the Danaus uh, Corporation, at least in the context of uh, the Big Data Stack project. So what we aim to do now is to, uh, to look at the data services that uh, were built in the project, in the big data stack project, and to see how this uh, helps uh, the Danaus use case. So, um, excuse me. Okay, so uh, we start with a fleet of vessels, and as the status has just explained, uh, the engines have been instrumented with the sensors, which uh, stream out uh, IoT data. This data is sent to the Danaus data center. And uh, the first component uh, that I want to present is a complex even processing. And uh, this component uh, permits, first of, first of all, uh, at the edge, that is within the vessels, to detect uh, bad sensors. So uh, these, uh, these uh, the, the IoT data is examined, and uh, in case uh, there is a high probability that the sensor is, uh, is, is bad, then the, an alarm is created and sent along with the IoT data to the data center. Once the flow of IoT data comes within the data center, it is once again uh, gets, it gets through, once again, the complex event processing, but this time the goal is to detect a business rule infringement. This is a, a simple illustration of possible business rules. Uh, it could be, for instance, uh, that a rolling average of uh, full consumption should be within a such or such range uh, as derived from uh, the SLOs that was signed with the particular customer. So uh, the, if a business rule infringement is detected, then an alarm is created and also sent along with the stream of IoT data. You can see that uh, not only we have the, the data is flowing toward the database, the lean scale database, but also 
a, from the database uh, some, uh, some information is retrieved, and this is related to the business rules which have to be retrieved from some. So, uh, that uh, completes the, the data ingestion and its processing prior to being uh, ingested within the Lean Scale database. So, the Lean Scale database, in fact, will be used for storing real. I think you have just frozen. Database. So, uh, you have, sorry. So first of all, we have to ask you to to step back mm -hmm. one minute because you yeah, froze. Can you hear me? Yes, now. But you stop for let's say uh, connection. Can you hear 15 me? Fifteen uh, seconds. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so um, can, can you hear me, Marika? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, we just need you to rewind back for one, uh, for half a minute. The same slide. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Yes, if you were the the slide you showed. Marika, can you? Uh, um... Hi, we can hear you. Yes, okay. we can. I hope we can I hear can you. Be heard. Yes, we can hear you. So. Um, but we can't see the slides now. So let's go on. Um, so uh, the the first component which taps on the recent data on the Linsker database is the data quality assessment. The data quality assessment uh, will be described in a few minutes. The second one are the machine learning uh, programs, which in fact are the goal, uh, which is to detect uh, possible and probable uh, uh, breakage in the, in the engine. And the, finally, we have applications such as the Danaus UI, which, uh, which are uh, also uh, retrieving data from the database. So uh, this, this is for the recent data, but what if uh, these services or application want to retrieve historical data? So this can be done uh, by, uh, by accessing object storage, which might be either uh, local or remote. And uh, here comes a problem, which is, that in fact your logical data set is uh, within two places potentially. So uh, here comes the seamless component, which uh, goal is to present for retrieval a single logical data set. That is the user of the data is not even uh, aware of where exactly is data is uh, being stored. So uh, this, uh, this is for data retrieval since data ingestion is directly done to the Linscale database. So this seamless component uh, presents a single access point and underneath what, uh, when an SQL query, for instance, is, is sent through this access point, it is uh, uh, forced into two separate uh, uh, queries, one for the Lean Scale database part, one for the object storage part through the Spark SQL uh, framework, and then a, a partial uh, results are merged back and presented to the, to the requester. Uh, for doing uh, all this, obviously we, move, we need a component which moves data from the, the, the database to the object storage. This is done through the data mover, uh, which periodically uh, moves historical data slices. Now, uh, it is uh, important to see that the transactional uh, semantics are preserved, while even when data slices are moved to the object storage, and also 
Uh, this has negligible impact on quality performance, which is not a small feat. Now that we understand uh, the seamless components, so we can see that services, in, in fact, instead of a direct connection to the Linscale database, may just uh, connect to the seamless component and, and uh, retrieve uh, data from either the Linscale database side or uh, from the object storage. Now let's have a quick look at uh, three components. The first one is uh, data quality assessment. This will be presented more thoroughly by uh, Statis uh, after I complete my presentation. So the data quality assessment, uh, the goal is to assess for each one of the IoT records whether it is uh, probably a very uh, good uh, record or maybe a faulty one. So this, uh, this, uh, this is learned and the, this uh, component is data set agnostic. Uh, and this is done and the model is built and the, and the, 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 the data as it comes in within the Linska database is assessed and uh, we get a probability of being a 40 record uh, on, for each one of the, the ingested records. The second, uh, the second um, uh, component is the machine learning, the very goal of the, of, the business, uh, of the business, that is to know in advance when an engine might uh, break. So uh, here uh, we present two graphs. At the, uh, on the X axis, you have time. On, on the Y axis, you have the probability that the breakage is, uh, in the engine is about to come. So uh, what, are these two, uh, what, what, what are these two parts? On the left part, we have processed data uh, without cleaning it, that is without uh, getting through the data assessment quality. And thus we get, uh, in fact, quite uh, a probability which is not uh, informatic, we get all more or less always the same thing, while on the right part, you can see that the probability is uh, this time, uh, this time uh, very differentiated. Now I will make appear the actual time of the breakage. So uh, this is for the left uh, part. So as we said, this is not very useful, while on the right part, that is, when the machine learning programs that were developed are uh, tapping on the data quality assessment uh, uh, service, we get a very good prediction, uh, which is uh, very informative. Now, the, the last of the three uh, components uh, through which I will get very quickly is the Danos uh, user interface that the status will, uh, will show us uh, in the demo. So uh, this is uh, tapping on the, on the data set data and also permits, as, as you will see, to retrieve and display uh, alerts uh, from, uh, from the Linscale database. Now we come to the last uh, service which I want to present and which is the data skipping. So data skipping, what is it? It is, in fact, some addition to the Spark Apache Spark uh, framework, uh, and it permits to, to make big performance improvements. How do we do that? So first of all, uh, this technology of the data skipping is relevant for SQL queries. Here you have an example uh, coming from Danaos, that is to, to retrieve data uh, that is pertaining to violent storms. Uh, this technology has been implemented for the Apache Spark uh, framework, but it could be in fact implemented with other uh, frameworks. So uh, this is a standalone uh, technology, but on the other side, it nicely complements the seamless components since the, the, the performance of object storage is obviously uh, less uh, good than the Linscale database on retrieval, so making things quicker is very important. 
So given a, an SQL query, we have a, it addresses a, 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 data, a, a, data, a data set, uh, which is represented by a, a set of objects. Um, now, the goal is to be able to skip a, over non-relevant objects. How uh, this is done? This is done by indexing and keeping an index of the, of the, for each of the objects of the, which summarizes, kind of summarizes the, the content of the object. And in fact, permits to skip it uh, if it is not relevant for a given query. So uh, what happens is that uh, through this index, we are able to retrieve the, the possible relevant objects and to, uh, and to ingest them within the Apache uh, Spark uh, compute cluster, thus uh, relieving us uh, of a lot of time and money also. And uh, this, uh, this is a very uh, quick explanation of the, the data scaping. Now, this technology is in fact a, a already was already used in by other technologies, but we have extended it to encompass a, now many other situations which are not dealt with uh, in the industry, such as use of defined functions. Uh, I can't uh, now enter the details. Uh, and also uh, we have an uh, integration with the geospatial and the and the and lot of goodies which make uh, this technology very attractive and in fact in fact uh, this uh, technology has been uh, demonstrated uh, one year ago in the IBM Think uh, conference and uh, and uh, in fact this is already integrated as an open beta within the IBM Cloud SQL technology uh, query service and uh, so the answer of when can we use it, you can use it now, uh, just by uh, connecting to the, to the IBM Cloud SQL Query Service. Now for a very quick recap, uh, we have presented complex event processing, data quality assessment, predictive maintenance, the Lean Scale database, uh, which is integrated with the CEP seamless component, data scaping and the uh, Last but not least, the integrated the Danaos platform with the, all the services of the, of the project. Uh, what's next? Uh, we have a lot, uh, uh, a lot of things uh, in, in the oven. Uh, SEP and Linsky database are now, uh, uh, will now be able to scale in, to scale up, scale in automatically. Uh, they, and we have a lot of the, uh, improvements I can't get now into all the details. So this is a partial list of uh, what is uh, uh, in the queue of the improvements. Uh, thank you very much. That's all. Thank you, Yusuf. Um, now it's over to Statis Plitzos. Can you yes. uh, take the floor? Thank you. Yes, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, can you see it? Um, yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, I will uh, show you a demo of uh, the platform, the, the, the end user screens that uh, all these uh, data from IoT devices and the alerts of broken sensors, the alerts of uh, business rules violation that are generated um, from CB uh, and the alerts from uh, the preventive maintenance algorithm. So we have integrated all these solutions and the platform is, let's say, hosted into big data stack. So we, we utilize all these components to make it um, more robust, scalable, etc. etc. So um, what you see right now is uh, the, the latest vessel positions uh, with uh, the global weather conditions. This is a specific fleet that is, um, is comprised of six vessels. On the upper left uh, corner on the bell, you can see um, uh, 
the populated alerts. Um, so this is the, this is a list of alerts indicating that we have first a crosshead bearing alert, which is generated uh, from uh, the from from the predictive maintenance algorithm. We have a violation of the agreement uh, of, of a business rule, which is basically the charter party agreement, a contractual uh, uh, agreement between the charterer and uh, the ship owner. Uh, so th th this is an alert that um, th that we exceeded uh, the the consumption, uh, but normally this is caused and justified due to weather conditions. Uh, so in any case, we wish to be alerted and uh, ready to, to 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 justify if questioned, to justify this uh, violation if if we're questioned. And uh, the last three alerts you can see on this uh, small list are alerts that refer to broken sensors. So if, if I choose to inspect all alerts, I get to see a closer look on, on, on the, 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 the generated uh, notifications about CP1 alerts. This is the, the first category, which is uh, uh, the, the broken sensors alert. In the middle, of the screen, we have the crosshead bearing alert. So this is generated from the algorithm of preventive maintenance. Um, and last, uh, the fuel overconsumption uh, violation, uh, which again is generated by CP. So we we get to we get to use all these components, integrate them, in, in, integrate them, and successfully use them uh, through. Uh, this uh, and successfully visualize uh, the, the results of these uh, components. Uh, while we strongly believe that uh, even if uh, right now, uh, in, again, one could say that uh, the, the data is not so big, we, we believe that given uh, the demand for uh, vessel monitoring in the, ship, in the shipping industry right now and the, the customers that are practically waiting for us to install um, IoT devices on their uh, vessels, we strongly believe that the number of monitored vessels will increase dramatically. So we have to be in the position to, to tackle um, the increasing volume issue uh, and, and, and big data stack is, is one thing that indeed uh, paves the way towards that direction. Uh, so uh, from my part, that would be all. I think Mariki now is uh, the time for uh, Q&A, right? Uh, yes, while we prepare for uh, Q&A, I would like to ask uh, the Spina to uh, tell us something about the next um, so, Despina, while we, while we prepare, people can already start typing in their questions in the Q&A. Uh, I would like to pass the floor on to you, uh, and then uh, we, we have the time for the, for the Q&A. Thank you, Despina. Uh, thanks, Marik. Uh, just uh, one minute to uh, introduce you to uh, the next webinar, uh, Big Data Pilot Demo Day 4. Uh, it is IBITAS application to the telecommunications sector. So on behalf of the IBITAS consortium, I would like to invite you to join us next Thursday, June 25th. Uh, we do have two speakers, Dr. Uh, Dusan Jakovetic. Uh, he is an assistant professor at the University of Novi Sad and also the IBITAS scientific and technical manager. Uh, Dr. Ioannis Arapakis, he is a researcher at uh, Telefonica. So uh, in this webinar, we are going to uh, demonstrate in a step-by-step -step, uh, fashion our self-service solution for both experts and non-expert users. Uh, the big data pilot is Telefonica. Telefonica is one of the largest telecommunication companies operating in uh, 16 uh, countries in Europe and Latin America with more than 350 million of customers. Uh, so we are going to demonstrate uh, interesting use cases like uh, quality of service in call centers, uh, chatbots, uh, where the goal is to uh, predict the customer satisfaction index, um, use cases for mobility data, 
optimization of placement of telecommunication equipment like antennas, accurate location prediction with high traffic and visibility to optimize the resource uh, distribution. So uh, book the date in your calendars. We will be more than happy to have you in the next webinar. Uh, Marik, thanks again, back to you. Thank you, Spina. So um, I can't see the, the question and answer box, Andrea. Do, uh, are there any questions in at the moment? So Marik, actually there are no questions, but I have one maybe for Dr. Klitsos. So what if uh, I would like to adapt this real-time ship management uh, to another kind of, uh, let's say, kind of fleet? So what about trains, for instance, or airplanes? Would it be possible to adapt such kind of monitoring and insight gathering, for instance, to a train uh, fleet? Um, well, if, if, if you go a step back and, uh, and see it from a larger distance, I mean, big, big data stuff. And uh, what we practically do, we're talking about IoT data, okay, um, flowing into a system. Uh, using analytics and streaming uh, uh, and, and stream processing in order to get some uh, results. Uh, so yes, I strongly believe that uh, the solution of, of, of big data stack in principle is uh, transferable to a completely different domain. For example, as you said, airplanes or factories. Um, preventive maintenance is a case that uh, stands there uh, as well. Uh, uh, the thing is that, you know, some uh, details have to change. For example, the preventive maintenance algorithm is not the same. Uh, the data rate will not be the same. I suppose if we go to the, to the airplane case, um, I was talking about data flowing out of uh, metering devices per minute. I would expect that, uh, you know, given the severity of, uh, you know, carrying people in the air is, uh, you know, crucial and uh, um, very, very important the, for, for security reasons. I expect that monitoring of uh, components is, uh, is uh, being performed in a higher rate. So we're talking about more data. In any case, uh, big data stack, uh, has proven but has the capacity to do it and yes I believe that it is transferable with minor details such as uh, the predictive maintenance algorithm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Any any questions that uh, that come in from the audience? Actually no Monique. I, I do have another question now that you, you talked about uh, implementation. So uh, this is both to, uh, to Yusuf and, and Statis. Um, so you, you talk now about the implementation that you had in, in Danos. So how, how long, now that the, the big data stack uh, solution is, is, I mean, we're, we're in the third year of the project, so the solution is, is, is quite ready. Um, so how long would it take for an organization for a shipping organization to uh, to implement that in their own environment, and are there any requirements uh, that are essential uh, to to take into account? So, you start if you want, please. Uh, oh, okay. Um, there are some requirements um, in, in order to set up properly big data stack. Um, I see two different roles within the organization that is about to use it, should uh, work hand by hand, the business analyst and the data analyst, which is quite common. I mean, the, the business analyst gives requirements to the data analyst and the data analyst provides a solution. Um, indeed, um, the, the, the basic requirements is that these two roles within an organization in order to first set up data stack uh, is, is important. Uh, then I would say that um, yeah, more or less it follows uh, um, the, the path of an IT project, but in a more interesting way. Um, meaning that uh, 
requirements should be collected, uh, many tests should be performed, te testing designs, etc., etc., within the organization in order to release it. So, um, I cannot give you an, a straight answer on the required time, but I could describe you how the organization would uh, use it. Thanks. Okay. Yusuf, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, no, that's okay. okay. Uh, because I have another question for, for you. Uh, because um, so the full solution is built of we, we saw that already in in both your presentations so the full solution is is built up of of uh services that in their uh in their um capacity have uh, uh individual components so the, uh, how could are, are these adoptable uh individually as well so we, we've seen the, the full solution but can we can organizations that may be on the call also adopt the the individual uh components within this solution Yes, uh, certainly. In fact, uh, um, most of them, most of the services are uh, standing alone. It was very nice that we uh, made them cooperate to build a solution uh, for the Danaus use case. But uh, you see, we have the IBM as uh, is presenting the datascaping technology within the, its, uh, its uh, services. This is standalone. Uh, the CEP is also standalone. The data quality assessment is also standalone. It doesn't matter from where it uh, gets the data. So uh, uh, the machine learning also. So in fact, oh, the only component which is uh, uh, the which is the seamless is the cooperation of uh, both IBM and the. Uh, a lean scale company, and uh, this component is uh, is not now publicly available. Uh, however, the lean scale database is a product, so uh, all uh, so the the seamlet is is the only component, in fact, that is not uh, readily available for now. But apart from this, uh, some user may take uh, any of the other components uh, separately or not, and uh, that would be okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions that came in uh, just now from the audience. Andrea? So, no, Marie. No? I think, I think we're done now. Okay, then, so. then, I, then I would like to, uh, to thank everybody who joined the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact us at the, via the Big Data Stack uh, project website where you can see here below. You can uh, follow us on, uh, on the social media for our latest updates. Um, and I would like to thank very much our speakers of today. Uh, so Statis Pritsos, Josef Moati and Spina Kopanaki. Thank you very much um, and have a nice day. Mariki, Andrea, and Diego, thank you for uh, making this event uh, happen. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.